Hello Vinyl Community, George here, George Allen, Vinyl LP CDs, as I've mentioned before, even cassettes. I'm going to show you some stuff I recently picked up, but I'm not going to show you cassettes or this uh, video would be longer than what I normally like to make. But I'm going to show you some CDs and some records that I've gotten, and uh, I'm going to start with the CDs. Because I was reading an article recently by the great jazz drummer Mike Clark. And he was commenting that jazz drumming changed in the uh, mid-60s when Miles Davis hired a young Tony Williams. And uh, he mentioned in particular a concert recorded called Four and More. So I had to get it because I didn't have it so I got uh, four and more I got it on CD because it's difficult to find on vinyl and uh, it was recorded on uh, Columbia this is it here I just got it the other day and when I was ordering it on Amazon I noticed that there was uh, a, another CD uh, Miles in the Sky with Tony Williams. This was recorded in 64, by the way, 1964. This was recorded in 68, Miles in the Sky. And these two are somewhat connected. And uh, I thought, well, while I'm ordering one, I might as well order the two of them. Because I noticed that when you order one CD from Amazon, there's a good chance it's not going to come in very good shape. So you order two of them together, chances are it's going to work. Anyhow, I got this thing and I played it and it just blew my socks off. I couldn't believe it. This was one of the, this was, well, this was considered. Miles Davis' second great quintet. And the music on it, it is just totally amazing. Totally amazing. And um, I'll tell you, with uh, Herbie Hancock on piano, and uh, this has, um, this, I'm sure it's, um, let's see. Who else plays on this besides Tony Williams on drums? And it's got um, Ron Carter on bass, and Herbie Hancock there, and George Coleman on tenor sax. Now then, Miles in the Sky, it changes to Wayne Shorter on tenor sax, and Ron Carter on, uh, on bass. But I'll tell you, you talk about some... Uh, Rock and jazz. Uh, I mean, I just couldn't believe it. Um, I listened to this thing and I was totally amazed. Same with this thing. Uh, Tony Williams, what a drummer. What a drummer. I mean, I've got some of Tony Williams' albums. I got some of his CDs also that I couldn't get on, couldn't get on record. But what a departure from their previous stuff with Philly Joe Jones. And Philly Joe Jones is a wonderful drummer. But the, but the departure from the hard bop and even from the um, uh, the modal with, uh, that helped uh, type jazz into this, you know, the stuff that he, Bill Evans worked with uh, Miles Davis on into this, Totally amazing. Totally amazing. I mean, you want to really... This is not Sunday afternoon easy listening jazz by no means. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. I'm just so glad I got these. Anyhow, so speaking of rock and music, I was at Walmart yesterday and look what I picked up. Bad Company. Rock and Roll Fantasy, double album. Yep. And uh, Paul Rogers, Mick Ralph's 
Buzz Burrell and Simon Kirk. So, great album, great double album. Haven't played them yet. Looking forward to playing them. I guess it's got too much stuff at the same time. Ah, back to the jazz scene. I picked up Lee Connitz and Jerry with the Jerry Mulligan Quartet. And um, there was something that drove me to buy this. Oh, I know why. Um, it's because uh, Chet Baker plays on this also. also. These things I had ordered a while back, and they just came in. And uh, it was some deal that, uh, I don't know if it was Blue Mill was running a special, because besides that, I also got this, trying to complete my um, Lee Morgan. This is uh, Blue Note classic vinyl. Oh, I think Blue Note was having a sale or something. That's what it was. So I got Blue Mo Caramba. The Lee Morgan. So, also, um, Stray Cats. You know, I love um, Brian Setzer's um, solo stuff, so I wanted to get a Stray Cats album. Never had any of their stuff, so I thought I'd pick this up. And uh, the reason why I picked this up, I was look, bought a... Um, an album from a guy, and I'll be showing it to you. I found a guy at Discogs that um, his stuff is uh, now it didn't come with the original liner, but um, when he rates his stuff, he rates it very accurately. And I got this at an extremely good price. And I was, I've been wanting to get some of their stuff, so I got this. Built for Speed, Stray Cats, and uh, nice rockabilly music. Also, you know, I'm a big soundtrack guy, I love soundtracks, haven't listened to it yet, but I read an article on all the versions of West Side Story, and it seems that I have the original West Side Story, but I've heard that... Um, uh, this is uh, Steven Spielberg's non music by Leonard Bernstein, lyrics by Steven Sondheim, that this is the best. So I got this West Side Story, anxious to listen to this, you know. I, so that brings us down to the grail that I've been wanting to get, and thanks to a... Um, one of the people that comments on my um, videos, I found out about this. Because when we did the contest, pick your favorite album, where'd you buy it, why'd you buy it, all that stuff. He made a comment and he said, George, in 2017, that record was released um, on 180 gram vinyl as a record store day special and guess what I went and searched and I found it and here it is Procol Harum's Shine On Brightly record store day how about that and had he not mentioned it I mean 2017 that was five years ago, and uh, I was not heavily into collecting at that time. Um, I hate to tell you what, um, I wouldn't go into my personal uh, situations, but at that time I was not able to uh, do the things I'm doing right now. But this has um, been re-released by Varese Vintage. And uh, I am just so thankful. See, this is the great things about the vinyl community. Uh, I believe the fella, I should have looked it up before this, I meant to. I don't even think he makes videos. 
but he, he comments occasionally on there and he gives me some good information. And had he not done this, I would have not known. And there are not many of these floating around, but I found one on Discogs. Well, maybe paid a little bit more than what I should, but it's worth having. And one of these days, I'm going to crack this baby open, and I'm going to just sit back and enjoy listening to it. How about that? So there you have it, folks. Not to extend this any longer, but my recent pickups, and especially uh, an unforeseen grail showing up. And who knows what else. I'm still trying to get the MoFi Salty Dog. And those have just gone through the roof, you know. And they don't show any signs of repressing any. So, I guess it's not as popular as uh, some other things like the Eagles or uh, whatever. Some of those mainstream ones that everybody loves, I guess. And uh, I don't know. Um, maybe I ought to write them a letter and say, hey, what's the matter with these guys? You know, repress uh, Salty Dog, you know. George wants a copy. <laughs> maybe I can get him to send one of theirs, their personal ones to me. Anyhow, that's it. Have a great week. Don't forget the contest is going on. I got to hit 400. I think I'm at 381 now or something. So I'm only 19 away. How about that? Have a great day and a blessed week. See you later. Bye-bye.